Hello, and welcome to this Tech Target video about Beef or the Browser Exploitation Framework. This is the companion video to the written resource uh, that you may have seen. If you haven't seen the, the written resource yet, I do encourage you to go look at it as always um, because it is written. Um, we're able to spend a little bit more time on some of these features here than we are in the actual uh, video presentation. So if you haven't looked at that, I would encourage you to take a look at it. Um, but uh, just a couple of quick notes before we get started. Um, the first one is, generally speaking, if you've seen videos that I've done for Tech Target before uh, along these lines, um, you will know that generally speaking, I'll start off with a virtual machine image, like a, a stock Kali image or something like that. Um, in this case, um, I'm actually not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm working with, uh, with, with a desktop directly. So this is just a, uh, a, a Debian uh, box here. Um, the reason why that is the case is that um, I alluded to this in, in the written article, but um, depending on the configuration options that you choose, um, the uh, Beef tool may or may not be installed by default within Kali. So since since it's more likely than not that you'll that you'll have to have installed it installed it anyway, um, and we provide instructions for how to do that within within the written article, um, you know. Uh, felt it was probably easier to, to use just a regular desktop so that, um, you know, we're not having to go through the whole installation process live with you, which takes some time and, you know, frankly, can be better spent talking about features of, of, of the tool. Um, the other thing to note here is that as with any a tool, tool like this that can be used in a red team use case, um, there are legal ways to use this and there are illegal ways to use it. Um, from a legal standpoint, red or blue team usage for your organization, you can use it for obviously from, from an attack standpoint, basically what the tool does is it allows you to give, it gives you limited control over a tab on, on a user's browser. Um, you can use that as a conduit for attacking internal resources, but also from a blue team standpoint, it can help you for audit and assurance activities around, um, uh, for example, validating zero trust controls. Under zero trust, as we all know, um, there's no implied trust of any resource by virtue of where it's located on, on, on a network. So if you actually want to test that from an audit standpoint, well, you can use a, a tool like this to help you get there. Um, so that's really kind of what it does. Um, in terms of the environment itself, as I said, I just went to the, um, you know, to the, the, the Beef Project site, uh, followed it to their, their GitHub, and just did git clone. I, I just basically cloned their, their source here, um, which has resulted in uh, basically a directory that, uh, that has the beef tool running in it. So um, without further ado, let's actually talk about some usage. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start, start the tool here. Um, normally, at, uh, normally the first time you run the tool or in the case of Kali when you're installing it, if you, if you use their, their apt package or APT package to install it, um, what you'll find is that uh, it will ask you for uh, credentials um, uh, early on in the process, right? Um, if, however, you need to set them yourself, maybe you forget them, maybe you know your particular installation didn't prompt you for that, there is a configuration file. Um, it's config.yaml um, that you can edit and uh, basically address, put in whatever credentials that you would like. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to use uh, some default credentials, and I'm just going to navigate here to, um, we'll just copy and paste this into our browser, and we'll go ahead and put those credentials in, and voila, it puts you into uh, the getting started page. So this getting started page is the default page that you'll see when you first log in. Um, useful thing to pay attention to. So it's, if you haven't used the tool before, it's definitely worth reading this material here. Um, it'll explain to you some of the concepts, some really important things to know. So, you know, uh, from a, from a manual reading point of view, definitely want to read this getting started piece. Um, but, but as far as the actual UI, the thing to pay attention to, the thing that you'll, that at least from this view that you really will interact with the most is this here where it says you hooked browsers over here on the list on the left. So if you recall, the purpose of the tool that we were talking about earlier is um, for hooking tabs within an end user browser. So anytime that you do that, anytime that you accomplish that, if you have a new um, 
user that has a, a hooked tab within their browser, browser it's going to appear here in this list. Okay, so basically um, we want to somehow get the user to click on a page that we control. So they have some demo pages here, which we're going to, which we'll use. Um, but really, you can put the code within any page, right? So if you have, for example, something like a um, something like a um, cross-site scripting, persistent cross-site scripting issue on a resource, you can use that to actually launch this this uh, uh, the the code that 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 lets you hook a browser. You can use it in a watering hole attack, for example. Like if you can direct them to um, you know, to, to a web page that you control. You can send them a, a link to it with an email. Essentially, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a user to navigate either via link or URL or what have you to a web page that you control that has this little code on it that will allow you to hook the tab. So to illustrate that, we'll just go ahead and, and in a new tab, we'll open up um, the demo page, so you can see the demo page here. Um, not really much to it, um, but it, it will now populate under the online browser tab. You can see here, right? It's populated this 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 new uh, this new hooked browser. Um, let's do the advanced version here. We'll copy that link. We'll put it into our Chrome, and you can see here it's just. Uh, demo page about ordering stuff from some butcher. Um, but you'll see now that it, it's hooked that it's going to put this into also our online browser list. It's just the same source IP here. Um, very rarely will this be the case other than in a, in a test scenario. Um, but you'll see that it's it's put this in here, um, our, our, you know, our secondary instance. I'm going to actually close this. And you'll notice not right away, but eventually it's going to move this from the online browser section to the offline browser section. And the reason why uh, it's useful to have the offline browser session is like, so for example, consider like a red team use case, right? Um, you know, you might have a particularly useful target that uh, is only available to you sometimes, right? Like maybe, you know, they, it's available to you, that person, you know, walks away, they close their browser, they, you know, turn off their machine for the night, whatever it is, um, you lose access to it. So in a red team context, it's, it's useful to be able to know, like, when is that, when is that machine, when is that target back online, right? Um, so you can even orchestrate a situation whereby uh, you, you know, it becomes available again. So, um, so that being the case, uh, what can you do with it? So uh, one thing that's useful to note, just in terms of management of your UI, at any given time, you can just hit, click this red arrow here, right click, so I'm right clicking, and you can delete, uh, you know, any host that's here, just, be, you know, just in case it becomes too confusing. Like if you have 50 or 60 of these, it might become confusing, so you might want to clean it up. Um, another thing that you can do, is very useful, is this use as proxy, okay? So basically, uh, this is a little bit more of an advanced feature, but because it is so useful, I'm going to spend some time talking about it. Um, basically, the proxy um, will let you conduct attacks. It's basically a forward proxy. So it's a HTTP forward proxy. Um, so you can use that to um, you know, conduct attacks against a resource, for example, that um, you know, a, a user is currently surfing. Um, you know, this is advantageous, for example, if, if you're trying to compromise a specific internal system, like, so say, for example, there's an accounting system that you really want to try to compromise. Um, if you can get them to navigate to that accounting system, you can now start to utilize their own browser to, to craft uh, specific, you know, to, to A, surf the site yourself, but also B, um, you know, craft specific queries against it, right, to, to, to use it to, to look at specific things. Um, it is useful to note here, though, that that just be alert to the fact that there are things like, uh, you know, cross-origin rules and, you know, cross-site request rules and stuff like that. So um, you can't just surf the web however you want, at least on most modern browsers, you can't just arbitrarily surf to whatever site using that, that, 
that tab, at least not using the, the proxy functionality. Um, and again, the reason why is because, you know, browsers enforce as a security me mechanism that you can't do that kind of thing. Um, so you do have to use that a little bit creatively. It's a little bit more of advanced usage, but just because it can be so useful, particularly in a red team case, um, I did want to allude to it. Um, so as far as these tabs go, um, the one that you'll probably interact with the most is this this one that says current browser. So zombies, that just gives you a list of, uh, you know, this same information that's over here, more or less. It's just what, what has connected to it. Logs is just a detailed log um, and the getting started page, obviously, looked at. But the current browser tab, right, is basically what you can do against a particular browser. So the details page here is going to give you specific information about the about the host. Um, it'll tell you about you know browser plugins. It's going to tell you about um, cookies. It'll tell you about um, you know the 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 user agent right. Like what kind of thing is it that 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 is connected to you that that's connected to. Um, but the real power the real power um, is in this tab here commands right. So these are the actual things that you can do um, using this browser, uh, basically things that you can do. So um, in general, the items that are green are things that you can do that are not going to be detected by the user, right? So they both work and also are unlikely to be detected by the user. Things that are in gray, those haven't been tested, so they may or may not work. Um, things that are in yellow, or sorry, uh, that are in orange, are things that will will work, but that are going to alert the user, right? Um, and we're gonna, we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, and then things that are red, generally speaking, are probably not going to work, given the combination of browser and operating system and so on that you have uh, that you're interacting with, right? Um, now, as I alluded to at the beginning, this is a tool that does very much benefit from experimentation. So we're going to talk a little bit about usage and we'll, we'll highlight some things, but um, because there's so much that you can do, I mean, we're, we're looking at only one category of things, right? And it's like 60 different commands. Um, because there's so much thing, so many different things that you can do with it, um, this is where an area where I would encourage you to just download this tool and spend some time kicking the tires, right? Um, just spend some time learning about what it can do, trying different things, um, in general, the way that, that all of these more or less work is uh, you select the, the command that you want to do. So let's just, just to do a very basic example, right? Um, say you wanted to grab the HTML content of what the user is currently currently looking at, right? So you've got this ba ba beef basic demo that they happen to be that they happen to be on. So we'll just go ahead and retrieve that that HTML. And you'll see that it just grabbed the page HTML and provided it for us here. Now, in this particular case, it's not super useful because we know where they are because they're at the page that we sent them to, right? But um, depending on your your usage, right? If depending on on your creativity of how you're using it, um, you know, you can come up with some scenarios where you're actually using their browser to explore uh, internal resources that you wouldn't have access to from the outside. Okay. Um, so that's just a very simple one, but um, in terms of what we did, we just clicked on that command and then we hit the execute here. Uh, some of them um, will require that you supply some additional information. So let's actually look at one of those. So here we're going to look at a, um, you know, what you might do for a, a tab nabbing scenario. So if you're if you're not familiar with tab nabbing, basically what that is, it's a it's a fairly old schoolish now kind of attack whereby um, you know people who who have like a million different tabs open you, I'm sure you're familiar with with people who do that right they have like 80 tabs open at a time um, one of the things that that you'll notice when you do that is the more tabs you have open the less visual indication of what's going on you have on any given tab okay so if if I have like 50 tabs open and a bad guy controls one of those tabs one of the things that they can do is they'll redirect them to a site that looks like, you know, maybe it looks like the login page for your bank, right? Um, and they craft the URL so that it subtly looks like the URL for, for your bank. Um, 
they'll wait some period of time, maybe 10, 15 minutes, for the user to necessarily to forget what they had open in that tab. They'll redirect the browser to that malicious site. Um, when the user comes back, they're presented with a login page for their bank. They're like, oh, this session is timed out. Let me log back in again. And now they've just supplied their banking credentials to, to you. Um, just an example, tab navi it's it's a it's an attack strategy that that basically works because you're able to take over a tab on a user's browser right so we're just going to illustrate that we can use beef to do that so here we have one that says redirect browser and there's some cute stuff that we can do we can redirect them to like a rickroll page there's a command for that um, just to <laughs> just to scare people um, but in this case we'll we're actually going to redirect them to google so um, you'll notice they're on the Beef Basic demo now. We're going to just it send the browser and it's this browser tab the instruction to send them to, to redirect them to Google. We hit execute and it does. Um, in this case, it's not super compelling because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's, it's Google. But if, if that were a malicious site, you know, something like that looked like a uh, Microsoft Office 365 login, for example, um, you know, that could be, uh, as you imagine, that could be used in, in a pretty, pretty nefarious scenario. Um, yeah, and, and so we can, you know, we can um, get information about the browser. Like, so for example, if we want to, um, you know, get a browser fingerprint, if we want to get some information about that, the remote machine that we're connected to, um, we can just go ahead and, and execute that. Um, it will go forth and pull down that information. You, if you'll notice, the log is basically providing us with, with status information about um, the commands that, that we perform. So it's always useful if you're wondering why I have this, this the terminal in view. Um, it's for that reason. You know, each of the commands that we send from these various different command modules is going to pr provide status to us via, the, via that console, in addition to providing it via the, the actual UI here too. Um, so in this case, you'll see we've, we've got, we've obtained a ton of information um, about the browser that's connected to us. So, you know, just, just useful to know. Um, and then one little feature that I think is, is useful to talk about um, just because it, it, of, of how easy it makes us to, you know, it makes it to, to kind of know where we are is this network tab, right? So this network tab, if when we click on that, it gives us actually like a graphical representation of, uh, you know, of, of, what's talking to what. So in this case, it's, you know, it's not that complicated because there's, you know, basically just this same browser talking to, you know, to beef. But if we had, you know, if we were going through different, different networks, if we were, you know, traversing the, you know, intranet to be able to, to get into that resource, etc. Um, you know, that, that can actually give us a better lay of the land in terms of where is it that this, that this, that this device is. Um, so with that, um, just, Understanding that there are so many of these different commands that you can run and uh, learning how to use them is actually um, part of the fun. Um, I think we'll probably stop there, but, uh, you know, but again, I do encourage you to do two things. I encourage you to read that, the, the written piece, if you haven't done so already. Um, I would also encourage you that, I, in my opinion, it, this is not true of every tool, but it's, it's definitely true of this one. The best way to really get familiar familiarity with this tool is through through experimentation and usage. So I would very much encourage you to just you know download this, put it on a you know you can put it on a Raspberry Pi, you can put it on a uh, you know virtual machine image, you can just put it somewhere and then you know investigate what you can what you can do with it um, and and build up your usage that way. Um, but uh, you know, just spend some time looking at through these different command modules and what they do and maybe, you know, maybe kick the tires on the proxy a little bit as a way to, to get started. Um, so without, you know, with, with that, thank you very much for spending this time with us and um, good luck with your, with your usage of Beef, the browser exploitation framework.